Greetings in the love and light of the One Infinite Creator. I'm Andre, and I'm emailing the Gray County Councilors regularly about uh, energy transition, and one of the things is biofuels, and today they had a pre delegation from Envest uh, about their biofuel projects, and they are making bio-CNG, and uh, I've actually talked to them afterwards, and that they say it is viable and it's already being done uh, by some municipalities getting the bio CNG from their sewage plants and then using it for their trucks, uh, their municipal trucks and things like that. And I guess you could do it for public transit as well. And so I invite you to uh, watch the presentation. Delegations, we have Jason Moretto here from the Invest Corporation. Thank you, sir, for your patience. <laughs> he, uh, Jason is here from a company called Invest. He's going to give us a presentation on bioenergy. So, Jason, welcome. Okay. Uh, thank you, Warden yeah. Milne and Council, for inviting me here today and allowing me to... Um, provide you information of um, on our Southgate Renewables uh, bioenergy project in the township of uh, Southgate. I have um, 10 minutes allotted, so I'll try to get through this slide presentation um, uh, quickly and then leave uh, some time open for questions and answers, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, just want to cover uh, who we are, uh, our company, and uh, what we do, and a few of our bioenergy references and experience. Um, my name is Jason Moretto. As you, you know, I'm a co-founder, uh, CEO, and um, president of Envest Corp. Uh, we're based in Toronto. We were founded um, just about 10 years ago. Uh, we have about 70 people in our organization. And we are a, a mid-market independent energy producer. So we design, build, own, operate, and finance uh, inter energy projects, um, primarily focusing on power generation, thermal generation, and um, and also uh, byproducts like uh, like fertilizer as well, which you'll hear about more in upcoming slides. Um, mid-market, we mean. Uh, capital expenditures of about $150 million and under on our projects. And we have operations in um, in North America. So although we're, we're a Canadian uh, homegrown business. Uh, we also own a, a sustainability uh, a subsidiary called Bullfrog Power. Some of you may know that brand. It's been in, operating in Canada since 2005. And what Bullfrog Power does is provide about 9,000 residential customers and 1,500 corporate customers decarbonization solutions through uh, pro provision of uh, environmental attributes and other, uh, other products. Um, in our infrastructure business, we focus on distributed energy and bioenergy. I'm here to, to just talk about bioenergy. Um, and... Uh, in our, our uh, last decade of operations, we have displaced 3 million metric tons of CO2 emissions, diverted about 500,000 metric tons of organic waste from landfills, and produced over half a million metric tons of organic fertilizer. And uh, we keep um, producing more and more of these uh, environmental benefits. When we founded the company, um, we, uh, we formed the company um, with an intent of uh, partnering with Indigenous communities uh, where we can. Um, we're not just uh, talking the talk, we walk the walk. And, um, you know, we, we, uh, um, we have, uh, it, it's part of our DNA as, as a company. When, uh, when we formed the company, our founding uh, four directors included a uh, well-known uh, national Indigenous leader who just uh, received his Order of Canada last year, and um, the co-founder and chairman uh, has a, um, uh, is a is a leading legal expert in Indigenous uh, law and uh, has a practice at a Bay Street law firm. So uh, we have 
um, we try to structure uh, a equity partnership where we can and um, Southgate is an example of that and we'll get uh, more into that in the later slide. Um, our experience in um, the bioenergy industry and organics recycling, which is what we're here to discuss, uh, really goes back to our first project, which is the Seacliff Energy Facility in Leamington, Ontario. This was commissioned in 2010, and this is the first privately owned commercial scale anaerobic digester in Canada. Uh, I was one of the developers of this. And uh, what we do here is we have a environmental permit to process up to 110,000 metric tons per year of uh, organic waste material. Um, organic waste goes into that long building that you see there. It is depackaged and then goes into a series of anaerobic digesters. Uh, in this case, in the uh, thermophilic range at about 60 degrees Celsius for a couple of days. And then those large three vessels that you see there towards the right in the uh, mesophilic range, about 30 degrees for a month to create biogas. That biogas is uh, rich in methane, 60% methane, about 30% CO2. And uh, in this case, we run that biogas, that methane through a cogeneration facility, which you see there on the left. And that electricity, that renewable electricity is sold to the province of Ontario under a 20 year feed in tariff contract. And the thermal energy is provided to the seven acre greenhouse that you see there in the back that produces organic tomatoes. Um, we are a leader, we're a pioneer in this space. Um, again, there is no other there's no other group in the country that has over a decade of experience operating a private uh, enterprise that operates in the in the marketplace for green bin processing, organics recycling. And um, in our history, you could see the municipalities that we processed for region of Peel, York region, Halton region, County of Simcoe. Um, recent contracts that we have are with the city of Toronto. Um, uh, Essex Windsor Solid Waste Authority is starting their own their um, their green bin program in uh, 2025. So we've won that for eight years, and most recently in August of last year, Durham Region we're processing up to um, 50,000 metric tons per year over a 10-year contract. We've been recognized for our innovation in this space, federally, provincially, and municipally. And, um, you know, one of the big drivers here on the adoption of source-separated organics or green bin programs is the Waste Free Ontario Act of 2016. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. Um, uh, the first green bin program that we processed for was Peel Region back in 2016, but more and more uh, municipalities are adopting residential organics collection because of uh, provincial mandates to divert organics from landfills. And uh, I'm sure you know that um, organics going into landfills is a bad thing because when you bury organics, uh, when they decompose in the absence of oxygen, it produces methane. And methane is 28 times more potent a greenhouse gas than CO2 which is why it's try you know landfills try to collect uh, methane and flare it before it enters the atmosphere. Um, composting is a uh, technology that's probably about a half century old, but um, you'll see that more um, projects are uh, moving towards anaerobic digestion and the uh, procurements for municipalities now typically mandate anaerobic digestion as uh, composters are uh, no longer built in they're, they're, it's older technology uh, fraught with odor issues and um, they are uh, net positive GHGs or greenhouse gases and anaerobic digesters are net negative uh, uh, facilities. So we create a bio, because of the capturing of the methane, we're able to use that to produce uh, renewable energy which offsets the consumption of fossil fuel energy. So there are byproducts that help to reduce the impact on the environment with an anaerobic digester versus an aerobic digestion system, um, which is composting. 
Uh, just another reference here, our experience uh, in the anaerobic digestion industry and bioenergy has led us to uh, owning a biodiesel facility in Miami, Florida. Uh, so we have a biodiesel plant that is um, recycling used cooking oil in that Southern Florida area and producing up to 10 million gallons per year of biodiesel. That biodiesel is um, used by you know, trains, ships, trucks, and is uh, typically blended in a 10% uh, biodiesel, 90% diesel blend. But um, uh, some cruise ships are now operating with a 30% blend. And uh, we just had a meeting with Carnival Cruises, who is looking to uh, uh, purchase our biodiesel in greater quantities, has a ship that's running on 100% biodiesel. So it is a way for these companies and municipalities and governments to offset or decarbonize their, um, their operations. Um, and I want to speak to you here today about our Southgate Renewables project in the township of Southgate. So this is, um, this would be the seventh commercial scale anaerobic digester in Ontario. There are four privately owned facilities and there are the two that are owned by the city of Toronto. Um, you probably noticed that we also process for the city of Toronto, which is kind of a, a hint to how uh, well those uh, city of Toronto facilities are operating. Um, this, um, this project is um, a lot of the lessons learned over the last decade of operations in Leamington. We are uh, building into this project. This project is fully permitted and um, uh, it's very interesting uh, for Ontario uh, and the industry because it is in a very good proximity to the epicenter of the population of Canada and Ontario being around the GTA or being within that 100 kilometer hauling distance from the GTA. Um, that means a lot because a lot of the costs of uh, uh, to uh, processing and dealing with uh, organic residential waste is the hauling component. So um, taking into consideration that green bin is about 70% water, uh, we are transporting water here. So we try to minimize that distance and uh, the Eco Parkway uh, location in, in uh, Dundalk and Township of Southgate is, is a perfect uh, uh, area for uh, servicing Southern Ontario. And some of the largest SSO programs, uh, including Toronto, Halton, Peel Region, Durham Region, and York Region. The project is fully permitted and has been uh, fully permitted for a while at 73,000 metric tons per year. That will allow us to produce 200,000 gigajoules per year of renewable natural gas to be injected into the Enbridge pipeline. Um, and uh, we do have an interconnection agreement with Enbridge that we signed uh, two or three years ago. Um, we have had strong public support. Thank you, uh, Warden Milne, and, and thank you to the mayor for uh, for driving that. Um, it's been well received and uh, that means a lot in uh, the success of, of the project and where we are at today. The effluent from the uh, process will be a certified organic fertilizer uh, with a registered NPK label uh, with um, Canada Food Inspection Agency, just like we have already at our other uh, facility. And that is to be uh, spread on uh, farmers' uh, crops and fields in the region. Uh, that would be, because of its organic certification, it is a valuable input for organic farmers. Um, we started with a five-acre parcel, which is the permitted uh, site. Uh, the township of Southgate was uh, very gracious in uh, assisting us with adding a second five acre parcel. Three acres of that second parcel is actually usable uh, because of the, um, uh, the, uh, the creek they're running behind it. 
but um, it's valuable because the five acres was a bit tight in terms of uh, truck turning radius and uh, storage. So we're not changing the inputs and outputs of the uh, project, but um, modifying the layout. And so we're uh, undergoing right now a, um, a minor amendment to that ECA with the ministry uh, just for the, for the layout. So, um, and that's progressing well. Uh, we'll, we'll be completing detailed engineering this year on this, and then we embarked on uh, construction thereafter. You can see we've already cleared the site. Uh, we've installed the sign just to put notice to the community of what is uh, happening there. And um, we have held uh, public uh, consultations as well, information uh, sessions for, for the township. And circling back to our, um, our commitment to indigenous reconciliation, when we founded the business, we have structured the, um, the, the corporation here for this project as a limited partnership with the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nations, where uh, Envest owns 50% of this project and the other, um, the two First Nations will own the other half. We'll obviously um, design, uh, build, own and operate and finance the project but we will work with them uh, as co-owners. So the equity um, and profits uh, over the years do accrue to these First Nations. Um, I think I've, I'm within my uh, 10 minutes here. Um, I should just say that we have uh, used this model before we're building a, a large scale wind microgrid um, in Labrador at the Boise's Bay mine site that's owned by Valet. It's one of the biggest mine sites, nickel mines in Canada. Um, this is a, an important component to their $4 billion mining expansion. And um, uh, our project is decarbonizing that mine from zero because it's all driven by diesel fuel today to 20% uh, renewables. Um, and the value for Canada and uh, the uh, mining company is that it gets the commodity closer to creating a green nickel commodity. And uh, with that uh, status, it is more appealing to sustainable industries like EV uh, production elsewhere in the world. So it's uh, a valuable input uh, in a sustainability chain of supply. That's the end of my brief presentation. So I want to open it up to uh, questions and I'll do my best to answer your, your questions. Thank you, Jason. And just so uh, that nobody missed it, you heard that Jason said Southgate was a perfect area. Did, that, did everybody catch that? Okay, just so that we're clear. Any questions? Councillor Boddy. Thank you, Warden Mellon. I've got uh, two or three or four questions. Um, boy, these are exciting times. This is changing so rapidly. At least three of us in the room went and toured the uh, the Toronto uh, Scarborough site that I think was run by Aqua. It's doing something similar. Right? It's City of Toronto site. D Dufferin site, is that... Yeah, it's doing something similar. So, so are you um, are you getting source separated organics? Is it source separated before it gets to you, or are you getting bags of garbage and then trying to uh, pull them out? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. The term source separated organics means that it is. Um, the organic material is separated at the source, which is the resonance, right? And then we put it in the green bins and those green bins come to us in already um, packaged. So, the oh, there you see the photo of uh, our current facility. On the left, that long building, inside there is depackaging systems. So it'll rip apart the, the, the bags, uh, uh, separate the cans, glass, and all the stuff that goes into those green bins so that we separate out a uh, 
inorganic fraction from the organic fraction, the organic fraction continues to go into the process to create that, that biogas and that fertilizer. Um, thank you for that. Is there any special license or anything uh, needed uh, with regard to spreading the uh, or organic output that's coming out the back end? Yes, absolutely. So um, the material needs to be uh, a fertilizer and hence the reason why it is registered with the Canada Food Inspection Agency with uh, a NPK label, nit nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium label as a fertilizer. So it is spreadable. Um, and obviously there, uh, there are a couple of different uh, pathways to uh, spreading that on farms, as many of you will uh, know. And then there's certain uh, times of the year where that can be done. So we store during those winter months where we cannot spread into a network of lagoons, some that we own, some that the farmers own. So we built a network for, for storage over the winter months. Two more. Uh, you talked about thirty percent of CO two. What are you doing with it, or what's what's likely to happen? Very good question. So, uh, renewable natural gas. So, our this existing facility where you see the cogeneration plant there and the blue uh, uh, mechanical uh, equipment there on the left, um, that we're replacing actually right now uh, with a renewable natural gas system. And um, uh, for a couple of reasons, number one is renewable natural gas is more lucrative than renewable electricity. And then secondly, those feed in tariff contracts are expiring after 20 years so that we're coming up to the end of that life because uh, that feed in tariff was awarded in 2010. Um, so what happens in a renewable natural gas processing system is that the system strips out the CO2 and other uh, compounds such as H2, uh, hydrogen sulfide and, and other, other compounds so that the end uh, natural gas, which is commodity grade, meets the specification for injection onto the Enbridge pipeline, which is has to exceed about 98% uh, methane. So the molecules themselves, once they're in the pipeline, are no different than the fossil fuel uh, CH4 molecules, except that these have renewable uh, sources. So it's a renewable form of energy. Um, and that CO2 is is stripped out. There are um, some, uh, we're, we're looking at capturing that CO2 and, and uh, pressurizing it and selling to industry. And, uh, but that's kind of a, a side, side product and, and byproduct that is uh, not the core focus. It's a small component of what we're doing at South Cape. So, so well, I guess it's kind of two, but when are you going to be set up? And given that you're in Gray County and we've been talking since uh, some of us will remember, we were out at uh, Walters Falls and uh, seven years ago and the warden was um, uh, Warden Barfoot. And we started to talk about Gray County um, collecting garbage, collecting uh, the bio uh, uh, source separated and those types of things. So now that you're in Gray County or when will you be uh, set up in Gray County and Will we be getting a hometown discount to be able to give you all of our uh, file solids? Thank you. Uh, commissioning is scheduled for Q4 2026. And I absolutely guarantee a discount for everyone here. You heard it here first. Any other questions? Okay. Sorry. Oh, Councillor McQueen, my mistake. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and thank you for your, your presentation. So obviously looking at the map, if you go to the map where you look at your distance from the major source, Toronto, Alton Peel region and that, but obviously you're looking for a circle around that, maybe following up with what uh, the mayor of Owen Sound was talking about is you're looking bigger. Yeah, so the market drives the distance to the, the site. Um, as an example, we just won the Durham region contract for 10 years. Durham is to the right of uh, Toronto, obviously where Oshawa is, and it's being hauled all the way to Leamington. So that's a four hour haul. That's one way and then four hours back. So it's an entire day for one truck. 
So we are as we're cost effective enough to haul that distance. Obviously, the closer we are to the source of the material, we're, we're able to pass along those savings to the uh, to the generator of that that material. So that is a benefit, and uh, what that does is drive winds of uh, in procurements in municipal uh, procurements. So you're looking everywhere for for a product then. Was, was the question, are we looking for product? Absolutely, that's a great point. So we're at a point in the development of this project. We have our permit, we have um, our agreements. We actually have an offtake agreement with a Quebec utility for the renewable natural gas for 20 years. And now is the time where we are uh, collecting interest from municipalities to fill that 73,000 ton commitment. There is a movement that we've noticed the procurements um, when we did the first Peel Region contract in 2016, they're typically three years with maybe uh, two-year extenders as part of the term. And now we're starting to see a movement where uh, there is more and more source-separated organics programs. There is limited capacity. These facilities take a long time to permit and to develop, you know, five to 10 years easily. Um, so you see that York Region went out for a 20-year procurement. You see that Essex-Windsor went out for an eight-year procurement. Durham went out for the 10-year. So we're starting to see that more because what's happening, our municipalities are uh, trying to capture uh, the available capacity before it's all taken up. So uh, really am here to invite the county um, to the facility. It's in, it's, it's in your, your county and... and um, it would be good to rely on that support um, and uh, and lock up that capacity for the municipalities here. Thanks, sir. And it, oh, sorry, go ahead, Paul. I, yeah, okay, thank you. I, I'm doing the same as the mayor of home sound and you gotta keep clicking here. Last question is obviously with the uh, natural gas expansion or, or, or maybe not as much, but Enbridge talks about renewable natural gas. So I guess, you, Mr. Warren, you in bridge or this line, or there's a line close to there, I presume. So then is there a target of what you're trying to get with your plant or, or availability of that plant at full, full uh, production could put into the natural gas system? Yes. So we are um, targeting 200,000 uh, gigajoules per annum is the plan. And that's what the equipment is designed to uh, produce. That has already passed, uh, you know, um, uh, due diligence with Enbridge. And, uh, you know, we signed uh, our interconnection agreement with Enbridge uh, at the pipeline head there uh, at the Eco Parkway in 2021. So they're waiting for the gas to be injected. And we have a market in Quebec that is waiting to receive that gas already. That's a very difficult uh, agreement to, um, to 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 secure, yeah, and for Enbridge to commit the capacity in their pipeline for that purpose. Councillor Debrine. Thank you, Warden Milne, and thank you, Jason. I I did want to thank the organization as a whole for being so cooperative and flexible throughout the process. Uh, we the the enclosed space, the, the lagoons are not um, outside. They're, everything that is going to happen on site will be enclosed, negative pressure. We're trying to mitigate odor issues. It's not biosolids. Um, the, it's, it's green organics. It will be able to take, and maybe I'm at, this is more of a question, our green bin compost program be able to you'll be able to take some of that. But I'm, I'm reassured that, as you said, it separates the package from the actual stuff that you can use because we all know about wish recycling and, and people think that it can go in this bin, but it really shouldn't. And but So you sort that, it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, you sort that. And I know that <clears throat> the... 
the, the farms, uh, the green bin programs, it's all about organics. I'm, I guess my question is, is the natural gas that's being produced and fed into the pipeline at source there, why is it going to come back when we're told that we're short on gas supply in order to serve our 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 region, our our own community, and then the OEB and the natural gas elimination, <laughs> the 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 target to eliminate natural gas entirely when we need it so badly in our agricultural communities and our ag businesses. I know it's kind of not really a question, but just if you could confirm the green bin program and acceptability. Yeah, so um, we, you know, green bin organics programs, as you know, uh, really start with educating the public so that they actually uh, separate. Uh, I live in York region in Vaughan and we have a black bin at home. We have a green bin and a blue bin, blue bin for the recyclables, uh, green bin for the organics and everything else goes into the black bin and they go to different outlets. That green bin comes to our place because we still are doing the York region uh, work at this facility. Um, we do have depackaging equipment here and the more uh, contraries that are included is additional cost for us. Typically those are eight to 10% of the mass is contrary. We do our best to, well, we, we depackage number one. We actually uh, have a system that was recently uh, put in that uh, actually presses out any kind of water that's still in that depackaged material again. So what is left is a very dry, um, inorganic yeah. fraction that gets stockpiled. And when there's enough for a load, that goes to a landfill. But that is not, uh, that's not a, a, a culprit for greenhouse gases because the organics remain here. So we've, you know, uh, and the good thing about that is uh, landfills with, by, by eliminating and diverting organics from landfills, now the life of landfills can be extended and they're not places where, you know, they're not factories for greenhouse gases or, or that's reduced. Um, but we've had, uh, we've had things show up in our, uh, in those trucks. Um, actually, we had a visit by Simcoe County uh, two Fridays ago. I was there to, to meet them and uh, I forgot that we processed for them years ago, but they reminded us that they were the ones who sent three deer carcasses to us. And uh, so, yeah, things end up showing up somehow, some way in those trucks. Um, but we, we, I'm sure we made some good biogas from, from those carcasses. Okay, well, Councillor McQueen, go ahead. Just one last question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. On the on the agricultural side, if you're making two hundred thousand kilojoules from that plant, you're going to build what kind of volume? And maybe it's putting you on the spot with regards to it talks about liquid fertilizer and and other types of fertilizer. But from the agricultural side, what what kind of fertilizer volumes are you going to be producing? Is that... um, so. 70 uh, permit for 73,000 uh, metric tons per year. There is uh, often because of the composition of the uh, incoming stream may be dry. This is called a wet digestion process. So there's a certain amount of uh, hydration that's required to process through. Uh, we try to recycle as much of what we press out and recycle that so we don't put any potable water in the system for a couple of reasons, because number one, it's wasteful, and number two, it costs money. So you try to reuse and recycle. As a matter of fact, in the case there in Leamington, that seven acre greenhouse that you see, the wash water from their growing process is recycled into our uh, facility. And then we recycle that liquid fertilizer into their system so they can apply it to their, their crops there. Um, but to answer your question specifically, 73,000 metric tons in, add whatever water needed to be added to that, and that's your effluent. So it's what is in, goes out, plus the water. So let's just say up to 80,000 metric tons 
of a liquid fertilizer would be going out every year. Okay. Suffice to say that if you're looking to start in a green bin system, this is the guy to talk to. Uh, I'm going to give the last uh, last chance to Councillor Pringle. Thank you, Warden. Just a quick question on the process there, Jason. Um, you have the facility to take the materials. How does a township like Georgia Bluffs get those materials to you? How, what's the logistics on that scenario? Good question. Um, so there's usually procurements. Municipal procurements are uh, one of two options. Number one, where we're responsible for picking up at a transfer station at the municipality that they they uh, they they uh, select. The other, um, as in a recent procurement that we just had, is the uh, municipality wants to deliver it to us. And so there's there's different options. And in that procurement, they'll say. You know, take uh, apply this much cost per kilometer into that proposal cost. So it really depends. The municipality drives that decision. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Great presentation. Lots of interest. As I say, if you're thinking of starting a green bin system, this is the guy to talk to.